Larry, thank you so much for being here. You heard the description there. You did take issue on X, as it's now called. Uh, explain to us exactly what you found objectionable, at least in Harvard's initial reaction. David, uh, the, the statement by 30 student groups uh, blaming all violence on Israel was a moral absurdity that appeared to reflect views at Harvard. And I thought it was very important that the Harvard administration, the Harvard leadership, made clear that those students were not speaking for the Harvard community. And at the same time, in the same way that previous leaders flew the Ukrainian flag over Harvard Yard after Putin's invasion, in the same way that Harvard stood with uh, America after 9-11, I thought it was appropriate for there to be a strong Harvard statement condemning in the strongest possible terms Harvard-Hamas terrorism. And after a couple of days without such a statement, they, I uh, expressed my view uh, publicly, having expressed it privately uh, before. Uh, there was an initial statement uh, that, frankly, I wasn't very strong and didn't distance Harvard from the student groups. And now I'm glad to report that uh, President Gay has condemned uh, terrorism in strong terms and has distanced Harvard uh, from uh, the 30 student uh, group. So the kind of leadership response that I was looking for um, has uh, now happened. There's still a lot of uncertainty and uh, confusion, and so these are not going to be easy days to uh, navigate, and there are agonizingly difficult questions around the response. Uh, on the one hand, there's a right of self-defense and a right of response. On the other hand, when Hamas is using human shields, is using hostages as human shields, there are incredibly difficult questions about the appropriate and prudent and morally right uh, response. But it seems to me that if university communities want to make their contribution to that debate, the necessary precondition is that there be absolute clarity of the kind President Biden provided yesterday in the condemnation of uh, terror. And that's why I have been so disappointed, I have to say, in the collective response of America's academic leadership uh, to uh, what has happened. If universities wanted to take the position right. that they didn't respond to the issues of the day, that they focused on pure scholarship, I could relate to that position. I think there are arguments for that position. But given the number of issues on which uh, leadership at Harvard and other uh, universities have spoken out, to fail to speak out with equal vigor when it is terror towards Israel was, I thought, a real moral failing. Yeah. And I'm glad to see uh, that Harvard has adjusted its position and glad to see that to varying extents, other universities are responding. Yeah, and Larry, you're not alone in, in taking issue here. Uh, your fellow Harvard economist, Jason Furman, has spoken out as well. But also we have Bill Ackman, who says it's not enough just to speak out at this point. We should know the names of the students who participated in these statements because future employers should take that into account in their employment. Do you think it should go that far? I think Bill's getting a bit carried away. Uh, Look, uh, David, this letter was issued six hours after the attacks. Many in the groups had no idea that there was going to be a letter. Some who probably signed their groups on didn't fully know what they were signing. Some, I'm sure, were naive and stupid. I don't think this is a 
time for individual vilification. It's not a time for demonizing Israel, and it's not a time for demonizing students who weren't careful or who were silly in uh, what they did. That's very important to maintaining a community. Bill's entirely right, and I would do the same thing as he does in wanting to make sure that the people I hired weren't people who stood with uh, hate. But asking for lists of names, that's the stuff of uh, Joe McCarthy, not uh, the stuff, not what uh, I think um, strong business organizations or universities like Harvard uh, should uh, be doing. I think we've got to keep a sense of proportion here. We've got to keep uh, the temperature uh, down. There are incredibly hard questions ahead of us around the response, and there are not going to be any good answers, but we may find less tragically bad answers if we can recognize the clear moral lines and then beyond that support open debate. Larry, you of course are former president of Harvard. You're a renowned macroeconomist, former Treasury Secretary. It's awfully early going, I know, but as a macroeconomist taking a look at this right now, do you have any anticipation of what this dispute, this war in Israel may mean for the global economy? If it doesn't spread, I don't think the global macroeconomic consequences will be large. There may be some positive impact on the price of oil. There may be some tendency to move to safe havens like uh, U.S. Uh, bonds. But I think the effects will not be large as long as this conflict stays contained. But we don't really know fully about the Iranian nexus with respect to this conflict. We don't know about uh, the possibility of spread involving Hezbollah. And so I don't think we can be confident as yet that the uh, conflict will, be, will remain contained much as we might hope for that. Larry, as you say, there can be no excuse for some of the things we've seen reported coming out of Gaza. There just can be no excuse for it at all. At the same time, there are some underlying issues on the West Bank as well as in Gaza with Palestinian people. Do you see any room for hope that maybe ultimately coming out of this, there could be progress in the area? Look, you never know, David, and it's often darkest before the dawn, and I'm no expert on uh, the politics of that region. It seems to me terribly important to distinguish Hamas, which is a creature of terror committed to the destruction of the state of Israel, from many Palestinians who have legitimate claims about the lives they have been uh, forced uh, to lead. And I hope that a prudent uh, Israel will give no quarter to Hamas terror, but will at the same time recognize that there are many Palestinians who do not stand with Hamas terror, and that ultimate peace depends upon arrangements that reflect their need to live lives with opportunity and uh, security. And that's what we all have to uh, hope for. It was out of the terrible Yom Kippur War that came the Camp David agreements. And perhaps, again, it will prove to have been darkest uh, before, uh, the, uh, before the dawn. That's what we all need to hope will turn out to be the case. But right now, right now, we have had unconscionable uh, terrorism, and it would be a real mistake to suggest symmetry 
at a moment of this kind.